when they hit. This is 23,000 pounds per square inch. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for 20 dark stories behind children's toys. Grab some cat and squish it flat, or stretch it long. Yeah, it's on! For this list, we're looking at popular kids' toys and the companies that produce them that have a dark chapter in their history. Did you ever experience a mishap or injury because of one of these toys? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Elmo Channels Chucky. Stop! There are few children's characters more iconic than Elmo, the breakout star of Sesame Street. This furry red creature with the orange nose has had countless toys made in his likeness over the years. Many of them, like Tickle Me Elmo, have become must-have items upon release. Unfortunately, a number of Speaking Elmo dolls have broken bad after going home to an unsuspecting family. The 2007 Sing With Elmo's Greatest Hits toy encouraged kids to beat up Elmo and rip your fur out. It was an issue of distorted audio. In 2008, one Elmo Knows Your Name doll went full child's play when it allegedly started saying Kill James to its two-year-old owner, James Bowman. Kill James? Who would have guessed it'd be Elmo to pick up where Chucky left off? Kill James? What was that? Kill James? Number 19, Cabbage Patch Kids turned cannibal? You're the only one. I love you. These smiling cherubic dolls were a mainstay of many a childhood in the 80s and 90s. Though they're still being produced and distributed, back in the day there was literally one in every kid's closet or bed. Heck, a Cabbage Patch Kid may have even replaced a teddy bear at night as the thing that four-year-old you cuddled while falling asleep. Well, you should just be thankful that it was not one of the Cabbage Patch Snack Time Kids, which were all the rage around Christmas 1996. Snack. Wow, she really chews! This line of dolls ate plastic food, which would then wind up in the doll's backpack. The problem? Reports of the doll's eating mechanism starting to pull in children's fingers and hair. Cabbage Patch Kids Snack Time Kit comes with all the play food you see here. Eat sold separately, batteries not included. Number 18, Potty Mouthed Teletubby Dolls? <laughs> Today's toddlers and tykes might have moved on to Paw Patrol, but between 1997 and 2001, these strange, color-coded creatures dominated preschool-age children's television. With their impossibly smooth facial features, screens implanted in their tummies, and a gibberish language all their own, they enchanted kids and unnerved parents in equal measure. Well, as it turns out, the red Teletubby Poe was giving parents something more concrete to take issue with. At least the toy version of Poe. Oh dear! <laughs> the voice actress behind one talking Poe doll had a strong accent, resulting in one of the toy's pre-recorded lines sounding a lot like it was saying, bite my butt, and a homophobic slur. Daddy, 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 oh. daddy. Despite clarifying what the doll was actually saying, Hasbro ultimately pulled it from shelves. Number 17, Barbie and Ken were named after siblings. These two go together like peanut butter and jelly, bacon and eggs, or milk and cookies. With the exception of a brief breakup in the mid-aughts, Ken and Barbie have always been a pair, more specifically a romantic one. Isn't he the hottest guy you have ever seen? Oh, Ken. Given that Ken was introduced in 1961, their love has spanned over a half century. As many people know, Barbie was named after creator Ruth Handler's daughter Barbara, Less known is that the second character added to the line, the anatomically incomplete Ken, is also named after one of Ruth's children, Barbara's brother Kenneth. While the characters aren't siblings, their respective namesakes are, and that inspires a bit of a no feeling. Number 16, the hostile takeover of Polly Pocket. Hi, I'm Polly Pocket. Let's have fun in my playhouse together. When we think back on the toys that we grew up playing with, it's with fondness and a profound sense of innocence. They're symbols of a simpler time in your life. In reality, however, toys are, and always have been, big business. They're so cute! So while your relationship with your childhood playthings might be pure, chances are that behind the scenes, some not-so-savory things went down. As is the case with Polly Pocket. The concept was originally a DIY one crafted by a father for his daughter. It was then licensed to Bluebird Toys, who helped bring this novel toy to countless children. Mattel also got in on the distribution deal. But in the late 90s, Bluebird was finally bought by the former after weathering numerous hostile takeover attempts. It's fun to be small! Wow! It's so tiny! Number 15, Hannah Montana went toxic. I'm Hannah Montana. Huh? It's taken years, but Miley Cyrus has finally distanced herself from the Disney character who made her a star, Hannah Montana. 
In the early years of her career, however, Miley and Hannah were interchangeable, and together, they amassed legions of young fans who wanted everything Hannah Montana related, from clothing to school supplies to toys. One such product released was the Hannah Montana Pop Star card game. Unfortunately, those who bought it were unknowingly getting far more than they bargained for. The carrying case contains 3,056 parts per million of lead, many times more than the 40 parts per million limit recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. And yet, due to a technicality, it was never recalled. This isn't over, pal! Number 14, Mattel's lead paint scandal. Toy giant Mattel recalls another 7.3 million toys that could have lead paint. Like in many other industries, toy companies rely heavily on Chinese companies to manufacture and supply their toys. And this supply chain structure can sometimes make it difficult to trace the exact roots of the materials involved. In one such case, Zhang Shuhang, the head of Leader Industrial Co., took his own life after it was announced that his company's exports would be banned due to them containing excessive amounts of lead. According to a Chinese source, the paint used to illustrate the familiar faces of Big Bird, Elmo, and others was fake. Xu Hong's company quickly took a massive hit, and he took his own life as a result, a practice that is sadly common in China for disgraced officials. Number 13. Furby was suspected of spying. What's that? Me up. It's my Furby. Furby was many things. A massive trend, an exciting new piece of consumer toy tech, and a solid substitute for kids who wanted a pet but whose parents refused. Over at the National Security Agency, or NSA, however, Furby had a more sinister reputation. The little talking furball was actually considered persona non grata. Why? Well, apparently there were concerns about the delightful little toy being used as a tool of espionage given its language-related systems. A reported internal memo revealed that Furbies were strictly prohibited, and if a Furby was seen in the building, it was to be reported immediately. According to Tiger Electronics, Furby had no capacity to record audio. But maybe the NSA knew something we didn't, hmm? Number 12. Glowworm's Poisonous Plastic Head. Squeeze it tight when it's night. Watch his face light up bright. Glow bunch of good night, friend. Every parent hopes to find that perfect doll or stuffed animal for their young child to bond with. A friend to keep them company through the night and provide a sense of comfort. In the early 1980s, an unlikely competitor entered the fray in the form of Hasbro Play School's Glowworm. She's so happy she's glowing. The sleepy looking worm had a kindly face and wore a sleeping cap and pajamas. When squeezed, the worm's head would gently glow with light. Unfortunately, the material the glowworm's head was made out of got its distinctive malleable texture via a chemical plastic softener, phthalates, which is toxic when ingested. Thankfully, its head was fairly tough to chew through, but it certainly undermines the trust between parent and stuffed toy. And when mom says it's time, she goes to sleep too. Number 11. Lisa Frank Inc. was reportedly a terrible work environment. Lisa Frank makes the coolest stickers! Not every company's corporate culture matches with their public image. Case in point, Lisa Frank Incorporated. For the uninitiated, Lisa Frank is a kids' merchandising company that was popular in the 80s and 90s, specializing in colorful stickers, school supplies, and more. The company's one-time slogan was, you gotta have it. And for many a young girl, Lisa Frank swag was indeed the pinnacle of cool. While people still feel nostalgic about the brand, past employees generally are not among them. A scathing Jezebel.com article called the company, quote, a rainbow gulag. Employee horror stories abound and have for years, including rules enforcing zero conversation, management recording employee phone calls, a verbally abusive CEO, sudden terminations, and countless employee lawsuits. I don't think I ever want to be a manufacturer again. That takes away from who I am, and what I really love to do is to do artwork. Number 10. A legal war over troll dolls. Treasure trolls are the only trolls that have a jewel in their tummy that you can wish on. What would you wish for? Like Polly Pocket, these dolls, instantly identifiable thanks to their wild hair, cherubic cheeks, and prominent belly buttons, have a complicated backstory. These bizarre little humanoid creatures were first conceived of and created by a humble Danish man in the 1950s who carved the very first troll doll out of necessity. Christmas was coming and he couldn't afford a gift for his daughter. He soon found himself with a fledgling business empire, but while he secured a copyright for his creation in his native Denmark, he encountered issues in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, your next president, Russ Troll. Because of a loophole involving distribution in America, troll dolls passed into the public domain, robbing a creator of his dues. 
It would be decades before the copyright was reinstated in 1996. Get back up again! Branch, my man, you are right on time. Number 9. Adult Slap Bracelets 80,000 Trolls Slap Bracelets are being recalled. Often, it's the simplest of toys that really winds up resonating with kids. Long before the days of the fidget spinner, the thing the kids couldn't stop fidgeting with were slap bracelets. The concept is simple. A thin, curved piece of metal is covered in a colorful material. When hit against a surface or an arm or a leg, it curls into a circle. Unfortunately, as the material frayed on cheaper bracelets, sharp metal edges could result in cuts, prompting recalls and school bans. In 2011, however, the slap bracelet's reputation worsened when a Florida school used them as part of a fundraising effort, only to discover images of nude women printed on the metal interior as the material wore down. Number 8. Employee Trampled Over a Tickle Me Elmo But beware, like any hot commodity, the price is soaring. As everyone's favorite Sesame Street resident has learned firsthand, fame comes at a price. Not only have various Elmo dolls been caught saying troubling things, but in the case of the aforementioned Tickle Me Elmo doll, someone actually got hurt. Released in 1996, the toy became the toy of the holiday season after Rosie O'Donnell plugged it on her show. Oh boy, that tickles! Suddenly, parents were scrambling to get one. And on multiple occasions, the in-store competition turned violent. The worst such example of this occurred in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, where a 27-year-old clerk was trampled by a mob of shoppers trying to get the Tickle Me Elmo in his hands. Somebody in the crowd yelled, There's the Elmos, and they rushed us. He suffered a concussion, broken ribs, a pulled hamstring, and various back, knee, and jaw injuries. Number 7. Easy Bake Oven Burnt More Than Cakes Hey guys, it's me Whitley! And my Easy Bake Oven! These child-oriented toy ovens were first introduced in 1963. Over the decades and with well over 16 million units sold, they've successfully yielded countless, reasonably tasty, easily baked confections for kids and their parents alike, usually without incident. Unfortunately, not every model put to market is created equal. A 2006 model had a design flaw that allowed kids' hands or fingers to become caught in the oven's front-loading door. 29 such cases were reported, including five that involved burns. A retrofit kit was released, but failed to make a difference. The number of burns climbed to 77, including one that required a partial amputation of a five-year-old's finger. Number 6. Super Soaker Attacks That's not pressure, this is pressure! The Super Soaker CPS Constant Pressure System! In hot summer months, Super Soakers can be a great way for children to cool down and get some physical activity. There's nothing like the threat of being hit with a stream of cold water to get a group of kids laughing, screaming, and running around. The thing is, Super Soakers should only be used with adult supervision to make sure they're being played with appropriately, safely, and in a way that's fun for everyone involved. Sure, it's just water, but at high enough pressures, it can still hurt. Double barrel! Four times the payload of your original Super Soaker! Worse, the contents can be switched for another liquid. There have been several cases of people filling Super Soakers with bleach or other chemical irritants, resulting in severe burns. My eyes, the goggles do nothing! Number 5. Gak Isn't Just a Toy Have you heard the sound? It's coming back around! Nickelodeon's Gak is back! Would the average parent let their kid play with a toy called cocaine? Not likely. But in the early 90s, Nickelodeon and Mattel came together to release a gross-out toy called Gak, inspired by the gooey substance by the same name featured on the TV series Double Dare. A canister of thick, squishy material, Gak would make a fart sound when pushed. While well, kids got a kick out of it, the name surely raised a few eyebrows among adults familiar with drug culture. As then Double Dare host Mark Summers has acknowledged, it is a street term for heroin. Yikes. Never told that story before. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here, guys. That's right. Oh, my. Number four, the dangers of Lego. Remember, kids, if you want to be like Batman, take care of your abs. There are few toys that have enjoyed more enduring popularity or inspired more children than Lego. Unfortunately, these little interconnecting plastic blocks enjoy such universal popularity that, sadly, they often find their way into the hands of children who don't meet the minimum age requirement for safe play. That's not official safety orange. And, as little hands always do, they put those Lego blocks into their mouths where they pose a serious choking hazard, especially the smaller pieces. Choking is among the leading causes of injury and death in small children. 
which is why it's so important to supervise infants and toddlers at play and respect age recommendations. Over the years, there have been a number of reported cases of children choking on Lego blocks, some sadly fatal. Number three, He-Man got his skin lightened. As anyone in the industry will tell you, a lot of work goes into a toy's design before it's sent to market. You have to be sure that the toy will appeal to the largest demographic, and apparently the people behind the original He-Man toy thought the character would sell better with a lighter skin tone as opposed to a toy with a, quote, deeply tanned Eastern European or Middle Eastern appearance. One of the earliest prototypes for He-Man had a dark complexion and dark hair to match, but the powers that be at Mattel decided to make him overtly white and blonde-haired. 30 years later, a version of the original He-Man would finally be released under the character name Vicor. Number 2. The Banning of Lawn Darts In theory, lawn darts sound like a wholesome, harmless outdoor target game for the whole family. Unfortunately, when thrown, these seemingly innocuous pieces of sporting equipment can become lethal projectiles. When they hit, this is 23,000 pounds per square inch. The metal tips, designed to pierce and stick into soft ground on contact, have proven devastating when they make contact with a person. Countless injuries and numerous deaths resulting from lawn darts have ensured that they've been banned in the United States multiple times over. Lawn darts were considered so dangerous that they were banned from sale in the U.S. First, they were made illegal across the board, only for the ban to be lifted under the condition that they not be marketed as toys. Following the tragic death of a child, however, they were once again banned outright in 1988. Because if I had seen that warning, I would have never have brought this product home. Never. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Beanie Babies caused a lot of drama, including a crime wave. First I got Pinky, then I got Pinky, I got Pinky and Patty in the same week. They were cute, they were cuddly, they were soft, and as a child, you wanted them oh so badly. The thing is, it wasn't just kids who fell fast and hard for the Thai company's extensive line of plush toys. Adult collectors were soon fighting for them too. Beanie Babies became the catalyst for a whole lot of ugliness. Couples went to court over them, kids were hurt in mob-like rushes at sales, and families were financially ruined. Counterfeits abounded, as did fraud and theft for online resale. The New York Times even reported on a Beanie Baby bandit. Thai Inc. was actually accused of market manipulation. How did something so innocent get so messy? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.